This cheese making video is sponsored by Little Marine Workshops. Well g'day curd nerds. Today we're making a cheese that I've created and have named Tassie Devil. So the reason I've called it Tassie Devil, and this is the finished cheese, is because it has ta Tasmanian mountain pepper berries all throughout the cheese. I did not spare the horses when it came to putting in the pepper berries. So I used a whole tablespoon that I crushed with a mortar and pestle and added it all the way through the cheese. Not so much on the bottom, but I'll tell you what, the other layers, it is all through it. So it's gonna be a fiery little beast when we eventually crack this one open. So let me show you how I made the Tassie Devil. So start off by sanitizing all of your equipment. The milk I'm using today is from Inglenook Dairy. The ingredients for the Tassie Devil cheese are six liters or 6.3 quarts of whole cow's milk between 3.4 and 4% fat. 2 litres or 2 quarts of semi-skim cow's milk, about 2% fat. A quarter of a teaspoon of Thermo C or an eighth of a teaspoon of MOT92, thermophilic starter culture. Half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. Half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of single strength liquid rennet. One tablespoon of Tasmanian mountain pepper berries, a saturated 18% brine solution, and cheese wax or vacuum packing for the final cheese. So start off by heating up your milk to 33 degrees Celsius or 92 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm using a precision cooker to uh, create a water bath uh, that heats the milk in the pot. You can go and check out the video on how I do this in the info card now. Now we're going to add the starter culture. Just sprinkle that over the surface of the milk. And place the lid back on top and we're going to allow the starter culture to rehydrate for five minutes. After the five minutes, just stir the starter culture in to the milk. Then cover that again. And now we're going to allow the milk to ripen or acidify for 45 minutes. After the 45 minutes has elapsed, we're now going to stir the milk just to stir the cream back in that may have floated to the top. Check the temperature. Just adjusted it a little bit there, down. It's a little bit warm. Now we're going to add the calcium chloride. This introduces more soluble calcium back into the milk so it can set a better curd. Just give that a quick stir. And now we're going to add the rennet solution. Just pour that in while stirring. And then stir for no more than one minute. Pop the lid back on and allow the curds to set for 45 minutes. So 45 minutes later, I'm going to grab our curd knife and check for a clean break. I'm just popping it at a 45 degree angle, then turn it, and when you get a clean split, the curds are set. Now I'm using my curd cutter to cut the curds into 1.25 centimeter or half inch cubes. Just doing the horizontals with the cutter, and now using my curd knife to do the vertical cuts. So just cut them one way and then the other way perpendicular to the first cut. Then we'll have some nice little cubes. 
So we're going to pop the lid back on and allow the curds to heal for five minutes. Five minutes later, you'll see a little bit of whey on top. This is good. Now for this cheese, we're going to slowly raise the temperature to 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit over 20 minutes whilst continuously stirring. So it's best to set a timer so you don't go over time. So 20 minutes later, just check the temperature. Make sure it hits the 40 degrees. A little bit hard to see because of the reflection, but we have hit the target temperature. So we're going to stir the curds for another 20 minutes to expel a little bit more whey. So after the 20 minutes of stirring, you can see they're about the size of a peanut. Now we're doing a second heating phase. We're going to slowly raise the temperature to 48 degrees Celsius or 118 Fahrenheit over 20 minutes. And don't forget to stir continuously. So after the 20 minutes, just check the target temperature. Yep, we're at 48 degrees Celsius, which is fantastic. And you can see that the curds have shrunk even further. So they're probably the size of about a navy bean, baked bean. So put the lid back on and allow the curds to rest for 20 minutes so they consolidate in the pot. So meanwhile, while you're waiting, coarsely grind one tablespoon of Tasmanian pepper berries in either a mortar and pestle, or you can use a coffee grinder or a pepper grinder. So you can see I'm just doing that quite roughly there. So just transfer that to a ramekin or a small container just to set that aside. Beautiful looking little pepper berries. So after the 20 minutes of resting, I'm now going to remove the precision cooker and drain the sink. We don't need that anymore. Take the pot out of the sink and empty the water out. So just line your colander with a cheesecloth. This one was boiled just to sanitize it. So we're going to drain the whey only through the cheesecloth line colander. Now this makes it pretty easy because we let the curds settle and they formed a big lump down the bottom as you can see there. So just hold the curds back while you're pouring the last of the whey out. There we go. Now what you can do is put your basket underneath the cheesecloth. This is quite a, uh, a cheats method. It works really well. Just push the cheesecloth down into the basket. And now we're going to do the layering for the pepper berries. So we're going to transfer a thin layer of curds into the bottom of the basket. I think I used a little bit too much curds here, but just use make a thin layer. Pat that down. And then grab your coarsely ground pepper berries. I'm using a quarter of a teaspoon, just sprinkle them over the layer. It doesn't matter if it goes to the edges, no big deal. Then uh, top with a little bit more curds. And then a little bit more pepper berries until all the curds are used. You will get through most of the tablespoon of ground or coarsely ground pepper berries doing this method. So 
as you can see I'm just putting a little bit more curds on top some more pepper berries and I was quite liberal with the pepper berries I wanted it nice and fiery a little bit more curds on top and there we go that's it So now we're going to top the basket with a follower. Let's just fold the cloth over first, put the follower on top, and we're going to press very lightly at five kilograms or 11 pounds for 60 minutes. So after 60 minutes, we'll remove the cheese from the basket. You'll notice the whey is a little bit purple. Uh, I didn't realize this, but the pepper berries, when they react with moisture, they go a nice little purple sort of color, or maroon. As you can see, nicely formed, but it's not fully formed. The rind is not fully closed up, so just be gentle when you first turn it over. There we go. And then redress it with the cheesecloth and pop it back into the basket. Fold the cloth over, pop a follower on top and apply 11 kilograms or 22 pounds of pressure for another 60 minutes. So remove the cheese from the basket. And as you can see, the rind is fairly closed now, which is good. And just gently turn the cheese, spread the cheesecloth out so there's no wrinkles, pop it back on top, redress it with the cloth. Just making sure there's no bits and the spring got stuck underneath. Pop it in the basket, put the cloth over, Put the follower on top and apply 22.5 kilograms or 50 pounds of pressure for 12 hours. This should fully close up the rind and you should avoid any mechanical holes in the final cheese. So 12 hours later, which was the next day for me, remove the cheese from the basket. shrunk quite a bit it's got some lovely streaks of the the I don't know, it's not dye but anyway we're going to place it in the brine solution now for 10 hours and we're going to turn it at the five hour mark uh, all that staining stayed on the cheese which is fantastic it didn't wash off on the brine and we'll see that in a minute don't forget to turn it halfway through so even salting So after the full 10 hours, take the cheese out of the brine. You can see all that staining is still there from the pepper berries, which like looks really good. So remove it and uh, put it on your drying mat. Now I'm just going to pat the cheese down with dry paper towel. Just to suck off any moisture. Here we go. This helps it air dry faster. Now we're going to air dry the cheese at room temperature until touch dry. I took about two days and just don't forget to turn it twice daily just for even drying. And pop your little umbrella on top. There it is uh, during air drying. It looks amazing. That uh, staining from the pepper berries is quite aesthetically pleasing. So when air dry, it came in at 873 grams or one pound 15 ounces. Now I chose to vacuum pack the dried cheese. Let's pop it into its bag and suck all the moisture out of it. I tend to double seal the bag top and bottom 
just to uh, avoid any leaks which seems to work quite well don't forget to write on it what the cheese is and when you made it and when it is mature So ripen at 13 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit for three months. Anyway, back to Gav. So there you have it, fairly simple process. Uh, it was made in the style of Asiago, if we want to pick a cheese. I did modify it quite a bit, uh, but it is going to be aged for three months. Normally, uh, fresh Asiago is only aged for 21 days. This is gonna ripen for a lot longer. Uh, like I said, it'll be ready uh, around about the 26th of April, uh, 2023. So it'll be ready to eat then. But it's gonna be an amazing cheese. I, I tried some of the pepperberry and it has this tongue numbing property, a little bit like Szechuan pepper, if anybody's ever had that before. But it's certainly a unique flavor, unique to Australia, of course. So, uh, yeah, pretty good. So if you want to buy a kit that would make this cheese, then definitely recommend the Italian cheese kit. Um, and you'll be able to get the cultures and all the equipment that you need uh, to make this cheese. Uh, and uh, if you like the video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do so because then you'll get notified of more cheesy content as I produce it during the year. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.